Man, it still feels unbelievable to me that we just got three Hunter Hunter chapters in a row. And this week's chapter of Hunter Hunter was amazing. We finally get to see the Phantom Troop in action, or well, a little bit at least. New characters being introduced to the arc, Henry finally meeting Hisoka, and more intriguing mafia stuff going down. So without wasting any more time, let's get on to this chapter review. All right, so this chapter picks up from where we left off with Luini invading the Char R office and threatening the Phantom Troop. After all that previous taunting, saying that the Phantom Troop has gotten soft, he immediately digresses when Nobunaga pulls out his sword, saying that he doesn't actually want to fight them, but wants to team up instead to kill the other families on the Black Whale ship. Though Nobunaga instantly slices his head off, stating that he shouldn't have pulled that prank back at the warehouse if Luini wasn't trying to pick a fight with them in the first place. Now I think out of all the Phantom Troop members, Nobunaga is actually the only person whose Nen ability we've had haven't seen yet in this story. All we know is that he's an enhancer type, an elite level swordsman, and possesses a powerful aura shown to intimidate those around him. Because of his extraordinary swordsmanship skills, Nobunaga is also an Iaido master, stating that anyone who enters within his range would be instantly killed. And that's what essentially happened to Luini. He was within range of Nobunaga's strike, thus instantly getting his head sliced off. It's unfortunate that Luini didn't put much of a fight, as if he were stronger, we could have seen more insight on what Nobunaga's Nen ability is, though I guess it also goes to show just how different of a league the Phantom Troop is compared to most people on the Black Whale ship, especially the lower tiers. I mean, Luini was fairly decent in his own right, being one of Morena's strongest followers, and to have Nobunaga cut him in one slice like it was nothing makes you wonder if any of the other top mafia guys, people like Henry or Morena, could even deal with a single member of the Phantom Troop themselves. Moments later, a couple of the Char R, including Sadonke, return turns to the office and notices the dead body on the floor. Nobunaga explains that the body is their serial killer and they eventually decided to go crush the rest of the Hila Lee family while also searching for Hisoka at the same time. Of course, Sudonke is now even more excited to soon get their autograph. The scene then changes to a room with some of Morena's followers mentioning how Luini's death was a huge loss for them. That right there is actually the bottom half of Luini's body as if we remember he possessed space spatial teleportation, but the condition for Luini's teleportation to work was that he had to stay in this room in order to use it. So essentially, he could open a gate within the room's walls and could travel anywhere on the ship that he's been to. Thus, his fellow partners could also use that gate as well, making this room like their secret base to travel in and out and get their kills. Although now that Luini is dead, they can't really do that anymore. They suggest for someone to copy Luini's ability, but no one has an ability to do that, as you also need to be at least level 21 to manifest your own Nen ability. All the new characters introduced here are just under level 21. Just in case you forgot, this whole level system thing is derived from Morena's ability, so all her followers can level up if they kill people on the Black Whale ship. 1 point for every regular kill, 10 points for kills who possesses Nen, and 50 points for killing a prince. Reaching level 21 will manifest your own inherent Nen ability, while reaching level 100 will basically grant you the same ability as Morena. Back to the chapter though, a member named Bacante, who's already manifested his own ability since he's level 26, suggests to use his doors technique to continue getting the kills. We'll get back to Bacante's ability later, as the scene now changes to Zakuro and Lynch, both who were knocked out by Hisoka in the last chapter, but were able to at least identify his location. They meet up back with Henry to tell him that Hisoka is somewhere in the ship's movie theater room. While Henry will go search the movie theater, Zakuro says that he will try to find Crollo and make a deal with him for helping the Chiyus to kill Morena and all her followers in exchange for revealing the location of Hisoka. Henry eventually finds Hisoka and has a pretty tense interaction with them. Henry basically explains that the Char R and the Phantom Troop have recently teamed up with each other to kill the Hila Lee family. The Chiyus are also in that fray as well, but they don't want Hisoka to appear during this whole Hila Lee conflict because if he were to appear appear in front of the spiders, that would naturally make Hisoka an enemy to the Chiyus as well, and Henry doesn't want that, so he requests Hisoka if he can lay low in a VIP room on tier 1 of the ship just until after their conflict with the Hila Lee family is done. Hisoka essentially accepts this deal as he likes how honest Henry is when he was also asked who would win in a fight, the Phantom Troop or me. Surprisingly, Henry picked the Phantom Troop in front of Hisoka's face, but hey, at least he's honest. 
exist, right? It then cuts back to the guard, who secretly made a deal with Henry in the last chapter, that if he were to bring a certain amount of cash, the guard will show them the hideout to the heel elite. But he bumps into the underboss of the Char R family instead, Kenny Wong, and Kenny basically explains that he too would also like to join in on this precious heel elite intel. Eventually, both the underbosses meet, and as promised, the guard leads them to the hideout of the heel elite. The guard knocks on the front door and says he needs to check this room. Someone opens the door and says, I have nothing to hide. As soon as the guard enters the room, he suddenly disappears, and once again, the person says that he has nothing to hide. The chapter ends with Henry and Kenny noticing the strange shenanigans going on and threatens to kill this person if he doesn't wish to comply. Okay, so this whole situation is likely the works of Bacante's door ability that was mentioned earlier earlier in the chapter. From what it looks like, anyone who enters through that door will be teleported to a fixed location, thus allowing the other Heal Ali followers to kill that person and level up. But there seems to be conditions for this door ability to work, because when Henry threw a knife across the room, the knife itself didn't disappear, and the way the person was talking, being very repetitive in his vocabulary, saying, I have nothing to hide, or come on in, it makes you think that he needs to say these specific sentences constantly in in order to teleport their victim, and even the narrator's last words were recited three times, which again makes it imply that it's a constant recital condition. Although, when the guard disappeared, the person only said, I have nothing to hide once, so yeah, I'm interested to see what the exact condition is and how Henry and Kenny will tackle this situation. I mean, of course, they can probably kill him easily as we just saw the knife passing through, but that would also give away their only shot at finding the rest of the heal. Elise. If we assume that the guard is dead after being teleported, then I find it ironic that his death was foreshadowed by Kenny's smile. I mean, they refer to it as a cursed smile, an ability where anyone that gets a smile from Kenny will eventually die. So I wonder if that somehow increased the guard's chance of dying today, as it's very suspicious for sure. Also, to clarify this whole mafia situation, the Chi Yu's and the Char R aren't exactly working together, they're just mutuals wanting to maintain the balance, and since the Heal Elise have broken that balance with Morena in power, they both want to take the Heal Elise out, but Kenny doesn't know that Henry has already met with Hisoka and is hiding Hisoka from them, so yeah, it's pretty interesting how things are shaping up to be. I always love how detailed and complex Tagashi is making these scenarios turn out, but definitely let me know what are your thoughts on this chapter, how do you think this door ability works? Also, now that Hisoka is gonna be on tier 1 of the ship, do you think he he could eventually run into Karapika. Again, so much possibilities with the Succession War, as I'd love to hear your thoughts. But uh, yeah, with all that being said, thank you so much for watching another one of my Hunter Hunter chapter reviews. It's been the Fake Weeb, and I'm out. Peace.